I just wanted to mention Elizabeth K, aka as as a as a K. It's a beautiful name. She's joining us here in the studio right now. How you doing? Very cool. The oh. fog has rolled in, <laughs> and I'm sitting here with two radio goddesses. Woo-hoo. Nice. Oh, I like her, I like her already. <laughs> this is Crystal, by the way. Hi, Hi Crystal. <laughs> and how's your uh, journey to, in San Francisco so far? I feel like I'm home. I'm r- really happy here. And I am really excited to see what I start to create now that I am in such a place of um, comfortability. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of people would say San Francisco is really creative, and there's just a lot of stuff going on here, you know, creatively, like whether it be music or art or writing or comedy or whatever you want to call it. So I definitely feel that. It's, yeah. It's a place to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are you from originally? I was born in New York. Oh, right on. Mm-hmm. And my uh, father is Transylvanian. Really? And my mother is, uh, I guess those are all the Celtic Isles. Uh-huh. They've been here for a while. Yeah. So I am kind of a, a northern European girl, but mm-hmm. I grew up here. Uh, except for when I lived in Russia. So, oh, did you? And in, in Europe, yeah. And how was that experience? I loved it. I connected to Russia through the literature mm-hmm. and the passion. Mm-hmm. And um, I probably wouldn't have left except for there was a ruble crisis, a currency devaluation. I see. So I've had some big adventures. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Sounds exciting. <laughs> they don't like Americans too much, do they? Mm. That's kind of the feeling I got when I went to the yeah. Eastern European country. I feel like it goes through phases. And um, when I lived there, so just after Perestroika, when Russia opened up, you couldn't be cooler than to be a a foreigner and be over there. Um, A lot of it is... Okay, so do you know what? I'm going to take a step back and say, when I was going back and forth between Russia and here, what Mm -hmm. I noticed Mm -hmm. was that what the newspapers reported here was not what I was experiencing on the ground there. Oh, weird. And I was dialed in to the expat community, to a Russian community. I kind of felt, and I had a lot of journalist friends, Mm -hmm. I felt that I could give you a fair perspective. Mm -hmm. And then I would come here and read what everybody wrote and say, who are you talking about? Right. So I feel like when you get on the ground there, people really like us. Maybe the anti-American sentiments that you are accurately reading mm-hmm. are more politically mm-hmm. motivated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's all mind games. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And was this during the Cold War period by any chance? This or was this more just recently? This really just after. So we're talking oh, okay. in the 90s. 90s. Mm-hmm. Got it. Yeah. It's a little bit more opening up during that period. Yeah. It was being able to buy records. That was a big thing. I know that. If you are a pioneer (laughs) spirit, that was the decade. (laughs) Because everyone just, all the goods rushed. Literally, there were no goods and no products. Mm. And then all of a sudden, they were allowed in. And there were like literally shacks. They called them sklads, which are are, uh, like a shack on the edge of the street that you literally roll up the front wall and in there is a pile of stuff. Wow. <laughs> like a kid in the candy store. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of course now it's probably the most sophisticated shopping center in Europe. Mm-hmm. So that's within it's the 90s. So that's like within 20 years mm-hmm. oh, wow. from like from a shack. cardboard shack to 
top shopping market. That's Crazy. Good. That's progress. a good amount of time to get your yeah <laughs> to get yourself together. <laughs> a lot can happen in twenty top. years. Yeah. But yeah. you just moved from there to here. Um, I stopped in L.A. Mm -hmm. I to be honest with you, I just not only could I not access any money because when the banks freeze, you're done. The difference is, is that I could get my money when I got back to the States. The Russians lost everything, period. Oh. So if you're 70 mm -hmm. and that was your retirement. Oh, right. So sorry. Yeah. Wow. You're screwed. <laughs> yeah. So I came back here and I just wanted some sunshine, to be honest with you. <laughs> Let's so just do a whole cold. 180, right? <laughs> and I um, said so it's going to be like L.A. or Miami. And I ended up in L.A. And so I am here by way of Los Angeles. Got it. Not too bad. Not a bad, you know. Nope. Change of scenery. <laughs> but it was wild because Moscow is 850 years old. Yeah. So it's those fabulous old buildings. So enormous. The, the scope is unthinkable. And the age and the authenticity. And then you come to California and the city is like 80 years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really new. <laughs> yeah. Another condominium? Yeah. <laughs> And they demolish them every so often. They don't yes. stay. They don't stay there. Don't My, know. I actually grew up in, or she also grew up in Southern California. But in Los Angeles, there's a lot of development, like all the time, and it's hard. They don't really hold on to their Buildings. relics, yep. you know. But they do that here in San Francisco. There's a lot of landmarks here, and you know, they don't do too much of that up here, which is kind of cool. So. That I, I I miss the history. Yeah. I miss the history. I like going out into the Southwest or here up North where you can feel a little more of what mm -hmm. came before. Yeah. It's good to know. Good to know the history for sure. I, either of you have Russian background? Yes, I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Let me raise my hand. <laughs> yeah, I think Russia for sure. Poland would be my great grandmother my mom's grandmother and possibly Ukraine mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know too much about them. Oh. Did we lock it again? Yeah. I did. Is there somebody, is there a friend of yours out there? No, <laughs> we have another visitor. They seem to know where the, the lock is. Though. Oh, it might be a, another DJ. All right. Let me go check. I'll, I'll do it. I'll I, okay. We have um, a bearded gentleman with glasses. <laughs> Somebody's barging in. Of course, the one night that we do that, there's like, like people coming in. <laughs> but anyways, on my mom's side, I'm definitely Eastern European descent. Uh -huh. And on my father's side, oh, I know. Him. On my father's side, it's mostly British heritage, so Irish, English, and Scottish. You're the same mix as me. Really? Mm -hmm. We're like brethren or uh -huh. sisters. Uh -huh. <laughs> it makes for a mystical mind, I will say. Definitely. That, yeah. Yeah, I don't meet too many people that, that look like me. And I want to say that, you know, from living in, you know, a big, huge city like Los Angeles, there's a lot of people of Jewish heritage. But mm -hmm. I mean, in San Francisco, it's also like a big plethora of different ethnicities so you get to meet you know all kinds of people like i like that here yeah. i find a lot of people from those areas of the world mm -hmm. I find a lot of people with a lot, that i have a lot in common with mm -hmm. which i'm really starting to dig <laughs> yeah. and when did you move to san francisco in august of oh. last year oh, okay so i'm just sort of you know the first phase is Oh my goodness. Where have I landed? Where is my shirt? Right. Where did, where's my stack of CDs? And um, then I, I chose to go ahead actually with the album release anyway. And um, because that's like my breathing, that's my breath. The music is my breath. So breathing is important. Breathing is super important. <laughs> I, I highly endorse breathing. I'm just going to put it right out there. <laughs> Take a deep breath. <laughs> so tell us, um, uh, as uh, tell us a little bit about your music history and 
um, what people can expect to hear from your music if they were to check you out online for, per se? So the current album is electronica. It just is. It is sensual and groovy and my music is really feminine it is i really well i mean it has to be because i only write a song if i have a story to tell mm -hmm. and i have to feel passionately about that story and what i've learned is that it's not important if it's my story or your story Mm -hmm. because in the end it's her story oh. and our story right so like everyone's gonna somehow find mm -hmm. a piece or something that they can relate to yeah that kind of makes sense to them and I feel like from myself I hold the standard like I mean I don't know how many songs I write the ratio to the ones that are released mm -hmm. but um the standard that I hold for the ones that are released is, does it relate to everybody? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's always a good rule. It, there's, there's, I did um, my masters in depth psychology and mythology, mm -hmm. and I really agreed with a lot of what Jung said, Carl Jung, the Swiss psychologist. Mm -hmm. And um, he essentially felt that we are all part of a collective unconscious that informs all of us. We all are trying to get the same story out. Right. But if you live in a country that has mountains, there will be mountain imagery. If you live in a country that has desert, there will be desert imagery. If you live by a river, you're going to have river stories. But we are all trying to tell that story. And then you, you have your individual unconscious, which is your personal piece of that. But then if you go down deeper, we're all connected to that stream of the collective unconscious. And so when I write and when I tell you a story, I hold myself to tapping as deep as I can. To that into that underground river so that we can all experience the same thing um this album i would say is focused on relationships it's called rules of the game and it came about um a friend of mine barbara schroeder commissioned the title track i was having tea with her and I said oh listen to this new tune I'm working on and she said that's the credit <laughs> song for my new documentary that's <laughs> it awesome <laughs> so um my mentor slash manager Jean Renard he um he said you know I'm also working right now with Bunny and um let me let me give this to him this and the, and the first song was born mm -hmm. and it was this unique blend of singer songwriter and the sounds of electronica which I see I love electronic I'm a total I'm a dance girl <laughs> you know I love to dance I love dance music um, so I really have been listening to electronica from the time I could, you know, find CDs, yeah. and the early ones were like Kruder and Dorfmeister or Kraftwerk, mm -hmm. and then we went through the whole first wave with, you know, Depeche Mode, of course, being the most recognizable. Those were some of the front runners, and I've been tuned into that sound the whole way through. Although, my favorite all-time band is Pink Floyd. I just have to say that <laughs> they're not dancy. <laughs> they're not. But but you know what's interesting though? They started out so psychedelic. I got every album, even like Sixteen Picks, Grooving in a Cave with the, the small furry animals. <laughs> I have all their albums. But um, so I think from them, I really took away the storytelling, and um, then. I have all those electronica roots. Jean gave that song to Bunny, and we had this magic fusion. I always wanted electronica to tell more of a story. Mm -hmm. 
like, okay, we can dance to this and it's awesome and groovy, but if I want to chill to it and have you tell me a story, can you do that too? That was the challenge I gave myself. Mm -hmm. And um, after that first song, and I can tell you more about the others, uh, we knew that we had achieved that goal. So that was very exciting. That is exciting. And um, is this album out currently? This album was just released on March 22nd, and it is available on iTunes, and I think it's on Amazon by now. Yeah. That would be good. <laughs> <laughs> the farther you reach, the better, right? Yeah. And, um, yeah, it'll be on Pandora soon, too. Oh, wow. Ah. I love Pandora. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> if somebody wanted to uh, kind of sample uh, some of your music, is there a website that you should mm -hmm. check out? And I'm going to have to spell my name. <laughs> so you're going to go to www.sak.com, and that's spelled E S like Sam, Z like zebra, A K A. Y E S K dot com. What does your name mean? Do you know? Mm -hmm. um, it is Essa is um, my Hungarian name. Oh, nice. uh, it, it has all the letters. It's like all of me. I put all my names together, and it's the totality of me. And all my like all my perfect. beings in one place. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And cool. um, yeah, I, I think I smoked a lot that night. <laughs> <laughs> I said I want to be all of me. <laughs> this is the ultimate thing. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, was one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and um, tell us a little bit more about the instru instrumentation, maybe for the record. What can people expect to, what sounds mm -hmm. um, influenced it? So um, the sound landscape is entirely Bunny and Blair. So what happens is um, that's those, the producers. Oh, I was going to say, who's Bunny? <laughs> okay, Bunny. Where's the Bunny rabbit? The Bunny. <laughs> who says the Bunny can't hop? <laughs> the Bunny. <laughs> Tomorrow, the Bunny will hop. That's true. <laughs> I'll lay eggs. Yeah. <laughs> so um, have you heard of uh, insomniac events? They uh, are responsible for uh, the EDC festivals. Oh, okay. Absolutely. That sounds familiar. Yeah. So in Vegas. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they sold, I remember Jean telling me, like 1.1 million tickets for their yeah. festivals wow. throughout last summer. Yeah. So huh. Bunny. Is and two people died. Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> There's got to be some casualties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that many people. <laughs> yeah. So he is their um, creative director, and he is a sound designer in his own right. I believe he worked for Hans Zimmer for 10 years. Oh, wow. So, yeah. He's an amazing sound designer and a groove master. So the way we would work is I write at the piano, and I would write my tune at the piano, create the structure, the changes, the lyrics, the melody, and um, send it to Bunny. So I have a big theme of technology. I'm half deaf. And um, my last album, Tinged with Machine, was a meditation on that because I realized that I was part machine to operate. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that we are all part machine now, whether it is in your body, next to your body, or in your hands. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> that really took me, it took my sound a long time to develop. It was a gothier and rockier, I would say, in the first couple albums. Um Confessor was the last album that really had that rock goth flavor. 
as I moved into Tinged with Machine, then it was electronica, still gothy. And then into now Rules of the Game, it's taken on a whole new, um, uh, I would say, evolution of the electronic roots. Like, I feel like I'm growing forward into where I came from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the Ouroboros, the snake coming around to, to bite its tail. So we went, um, we went into the project that way with me creating that basic structure and sending it to Bunny. And he was relentless. Whatever I had made that was not the vocal or the piano, I like to write the hooks, it was gone. And he would just take that vibe and then transform it into his um, interpretation or amplification of me. Mm -hmm. The first one came back, I almost fell out of my chair because <laughs> the chemistry, you know how they say, like, we have chemistry. We have chemistry with our partners in life. We have chemistry with the cities we live in. Yes. We have chemistry with the people we make our creative projects with. Mm -hmm. right. And right. The, we just had this chemistry. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't buy that. If you have mm -hmm. all the money in the world, you know, and you could, let's say, I'm going to go out, I'm going to get the top five producers in L.A. Mm -hmm. No. I watched that happen to Gwen Stefani when she did mm -hmm. her, do you mm -hmm. remember that? Yes. When she came, and Fergie. It's not that they <laughs> didn't make great dance hits, but it's like, did they really find the person that truly amplified their soul and sound? I would argue not being huge fans of those girls yes. mm -hmm. and Look their when. undeniable <laughs> like Talented. super woman talent yeah. but um so that's uh, that's just why i am extra in recognition of the specialness of happening to come upon a collaborator that i had perfect chemistry with and we both knew it and like you can't get a minute with bunny but w after that song came 10 more we just kept De uh, churning them out. I would deliver, they would send back, I would fall off my chair <laughs> or jump up and down <laughs> screaming. <time>. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, do you have a lot of people listening tonight? So, I, well, they were expecting me at 8 30. So, oh. are we at 8 30 now? We <laughs> Hopefully, are. they're Four there. Until there. <laughs> well, they might listen to the podcast <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. That's always a possibility. Our podcast um, actually has been going up pretty quickly yeah because they think I've they're noticed. doing it manually yes yes so it should be up within the next day or so in case oh awesome want to we'll check definitely out. post that i know mm. some people wanted to catch the interview and weren't available so yes. we're looking forward to the podcast it's a saturday night they're all enjoying <laughs> themselves or they're in russia too right yeah <laughs> exactly. what is the time difference there so um it depends on which part of russia you're in it's Russia huge. is 11 time zones. Oh, wow. Are you kidding? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I keep all my time zones on my phone. <laughs> I love travel and I love the world. So I believe from here to Moscow is exactly 11 hours. So we've got, it's, so it's 730 in the morning there. They're Sunday? Sleeping. Yeah, it's wow. Easter. Except for they don't, they have a different holiday. <laughs> <laughs> they don't hide eggs. <laughs> I don't remember what we did there now all of a sudden. They have cool stuff though. They have Women's Day. Everyone, they March have... 8th, that's yeah. my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every other country in the world does it, but the US. We celebrate it. <laughs> we oh, talk I, about see, it. I see Jean Renard just texted me. He is listening. Hi, Jean. <laughs> I <laughs> mentioned you. Jean Renard. <laughs> I like your name. <laughs> <laughs> So um, tell yeah. us what people can expect from you in the future. Are you going to be playing any shows in San Francisco? Or are you planning any tours? Um, well, right now I am. So I told you we, we got those 10 pieces going. So I've um, released five of them. Are we going to play any of them tonight? Yeah, we can. For sure. But, um, so I told you about Rules of the Game. Rules of the game. Um, and then uh, let's see which one. Do I get to pick which one or do you... Do you know which one um, you're how do play? you 
I know you sent me an email with some of them. Do you know if it's also... And I have them on my oh, yeah, that's place, if too. It, if it's easier. Just to be on the same side. Uh, you can just tell us which one. Okay. So, um... <clears throat> I think I'll play first for you... So I'm definitely going to stay in this sound of mid-tempo, electronica, chill. I really love dance, though. I, so anyway, I'm not doing live shows right now because I am in the middle of doing part two of the EP that I just released. Mm -hmm. So there'll be another five songs that come out. And then I also started to get the vision for where the project is going next. And it is even more dance than where it is now. Ooh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> there's a couple pieces I've been doing a lot of. I've been getting a lot of um, requests to do vocals for dance pieces. I so and they, a lot of them come from these small countries uh -huh. that like a little like Estonia or Slovakia oh, wow. or little, you know. Yeah, <laughs> they're just <laughs> hungry for more. Yeah. yeah, and I've enjoyed doing them so much, and I've got a nice collection now. I've got a number coming from Colombia right now. And um, I'm actually doing vocals for a soundtrack from someone from Colombia I did a dance track for. So this is all through Facebook. Social wow. media can be pretty incredible. All yeah. these things are kind of like, they just, you can find who you connect with. And so I've, I've been really influenced by that. And I think I want to get a little, a little even more dancier next time. Um, so the immediate next album you'll hear will sound like the electronic style you're about to hear right now, the mid-tempo, sensual. And um, then the one following that, I think, will be a little more up-tempo. So actually, I think I'm going to start with Come When I Call. This is Bunny's favorite track. Right. I put this on SoundCloud. It has 30,000 listens now. Wow. People are really digging this tune. And when I do it live I do it with a vocal effects processor and I'll, okay after we listen to this song I want to tell you about that because there's some cool stuff yeah. going on there okay let's yes. see if this works let's do this
So that was Come When I Call. And uh, that piece, it's, it's really about not, you know, it's almost a Buddhist piece because <laughs> I'm talking about not having attachments. Mm-hmm. You know, and what, what you really want is just someone to come when you call them, when you pick up the phone. And With you that, call them. Yeah. Like you know they're always going to be there? Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, we tend to think that that means many big grand things. And it doesn't. <laughs> Sometimes it's just like sit next to me and listen to me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We all have those moments for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Quite often. Uh-huh. <laughs> and remind us of your website. So if you would like to listen to this track or purchase it on iTunes, mayhaps, the website address is www.essak.com, and that is spelled E-S as in Sam, Z-A-K-A-Y-E.com. Thank not, you. Not too hard to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Just put S and Z down and then some combination. Just Google it. <laughs> yeah, and Google it. It'll come up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. And um, I went to your website earlier, actually, just kind of uh, when I was making the event page for Facebook. And I noticed that you like to uh, dress up. <laughs> that's the right yeah. words to use but I thought it was really interesting it was very elaborate kind of costume look and I, I like that is is there do you do that for your live performances or do you do that when you record um, how, do, how does it how do you switch it up like that that's a very deep question the costume question <laughs> I almost feel like I am always costuming, and um, I love that. It's one of the ways that I express myself, mm-hmm. and it can be a simple costume, and I'm going to blend in costume, and I'm not going to blend in <laughs> costume. I'm going to be the center of the universe. Yeah. <laughs> Those are our favorites. Yeah. That's what we try to do. Uh, most of the time, not today. <laughs> Pretty plain. <laughs> Ornamental. So there are um, some dear friends of mine, um, Aaron Lane and Jack Stoss, started Myth Mask in Los Angeles two years ago, which is a um, elaborate costume ball. So I played that the last two years. And that was a chance when you get to be ultra costume. So that's some of the pictures that you see. Mm-hmm. Um, Hollywood was great for that. Everyone loved to dress up. Mm-hmm. And I really appreciated that element. I'm, as I mentioned, a student of mythology. Mm-hmm. So I love uh, embodying different archetypes, different energies, um, letting them speak through me. So I would say any chance I get, like, guess my favorite holiday. Halloween. Halloween. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't know if that's just because I'm a Libra and born in October or it's my love of, oh, you know what? I am. I remember reading astrologically. The day I was born is called, if you look it up in one of those astrology books, the day of the trendsetters. Ooh. That is it. And that day in October, and the whole question that that person has in this life is, am I wearing clothes to hide or to reveal? Mm-hmm. And I don't have the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I'm supposed to be meditating on it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're hiding anything. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> it's better to show it off. Oh, yeah. Show what you got. Best role ever. <laughs> and I like San Francisco for that. I actually feel very comfortable showing myself here, and I don't always. 
Yeah. You don't know. You're in the right city. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Show it all. Yeah. <laughs> I no actually work at a, uh, at the mall. And um, the other, on Thursday, I saw a guy dressed as a gimp. Like he At had, the mall? At the mall. He was just walking around. He was shopping. The, okay. Now that is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, like everybody was just kind of like, oh, it's just, you know. That's his outfit, yeah. That's his outfit. Yeah. That's his go-to I mean, he verb. was dressed with a... Tr- it was just like the mask, like the covering the face. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But he had like a trench coat on and everything. Was it Whole Foods? No, no. I, I was at the mall at oh, Westfield. At the mall. Yeah. At Westfield. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been too funny. <laughs> Imagine he's eating like organic stuff. <laughs> Opens the... <laughs> Before you unzip your mask, yeah. make sure it's organic. Yeah, exactly. That's the rule. That's the key. <laughs> it was kind of I think it's because um what was the band that was performing at Warfield? It was like there was somebody in town that was like into that. Oh, Motorhead? No, this wasn't Motorhead. Motorhead was last night. Yeah, I don't know. There was some band at Warfield and I'm like, "Oh, that's probably why." Yeah, that happens a lot in San Francisco too. <laughs> you know what ba- like with baseball, music, any of those special events kind of draws Was it the crowd that's mm. interested in that? Thivery mm-hmm. Corporation or uh, Corporation? Thivery. I don't know. I was it was like a it was kinda like ED like EDC like not EDC but um EDM mm-hmm. type stuff. So I, I knew that I was like, Oh, he's probably going to the show and he's just kinda shopping before. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so there's <laughs> a little bit of rhyme. Ready. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A little bit of rhyme. He, I mean reason. he was rocking it before. It was like two hours before before showtime, I'm assuming. So it was like a five. Or mm-hmm. six. He was a background dancer. <laughs> <laughs> no, he. This guy was definitely just the, just enjoying the show. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's always cool, though. When um, maybe you can relate to this as a when the audience is uh, relating to you when you're performing. That's the best part. And interacting with you. That's the best moment. Uh, I feel like I always had a deep sense of alienation or isolation as a child growing up. And I feel like the way that I was able to join the world was through music. Mm-hmm. And Agreed. Right? And, and music... And I'm going to talk about that other thing I wanted to talk about. I've been studying music. I've been studying sound vibration a lot recently. I'm going to the uh, an, an Academy of Intuition. I'm studying energy medicine. I'm studying the medicine of vibration. Okay. And um, what's really interesting to me about music is that because it's a vibration, it can reach you. You don't need to understand the words. You don't even need words. And we can reach out and touch each other and become that universal one. And thereby dissolving the isolation and the alienation. Hmm. And so my greatest wish is always the highest good for everyone that I come across. And if my music can reach out and touch you and we connect, then I feel like I've achieved something in my mission in life. So when when you perform live, mm-hmm. it's the ultimate moment of that. Yeah. You know, when someone says, thank you for writing that song. It's like success. Yeah. That is, that's my definition of success. Mm-hmm. When someone says, thank you, man, so much for writing that tune. I have this one tune, Empty Chairs, that's about, it's off the Confessor album. And it's not a big, grand, epic tune. It's this little tune that's just about the moment where you're looking at the empty chairs in your life and you know there should be people in them. Mm. And the comments that I get from the people that that song touches, amazing. Are you going to play that song for us? <laughs> I don't have that no. song queued up. I got, I can, I can play, it. um, I'll find it. I'll find it. Let's okay. see what, what would be. Okay. So I, I'd like to play the title track and then I'll, and then after that, I'll pull up a, I'll pull up a, um, like a deeper moodier song that's in that genre of what we're talking about right now, okay. um, off the current album. There's one on there. I always have one like that. 
it's got to be soulful. Fast. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> got to be. Yeah. Um, Anger. <laughs> so this song, Rules of the Game, Jean was a writer on it. Randy Amato is a writer on it. He's been recording my vocals for years because I'm deaf. I only trust a few people with my vocals because I, you know, it's it's been interesting learning how to sing uh, the way I had to. And um, it features a very interesting artist, Noah King, who does the beautiful rap on there. And this really talks, rules of the game, this really talks about us discovering the rules that we're playing by and then deciding, well, actually, are these my rules? Mm -hmm. And I'll talk more about it afterwards, after you listen to it. We're back. So that song, everyone calls that my my James Bond theme song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a little different from the others, and um, it's sort of in a category all on its own. And 
I really what I'm saying to everyone there is there you can't play it safe if you're going to make a change you just have to jump off the cliff just go for it just go for full it full throttle F- yes <laughs> just move on forward if you want so can to- I like throw the rules off yeah yeah like the image I had in my mind for this song is like a chessboard mm-hmm. and you're the queen piece mm-hmm. and just walk over to the side and you're like hm, and you jump off and like, the game's oh, done bye <laughs> I'll you play a different you, game yeah. <laughs> you thought you knew the rules yeah, <laughs> there are no rules Mm-hmm. 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 screw those rules mm-hmm. and well you make your own rules is what you learn yeah. what I try to learn over yes. and over again from your mistakes learn mm-hmm. from your mistakes and if anyone's listening to us live and they want to give us a call we haven't used the phone in a while no. but we can always try it out 415-550-0511 again that's 415-550-0511 and we are currently in the mission district of san francisco and it's a uh, yeah. <laughs> Close enough. We're all earthlings. It's kind of planet Venus in here right now. Yeah. <laughs> We're on Girl another bar. planet right now. And we are in 2781 21st Street between 21st and Florida. And I want to give a big thank you to Pam, who's been running thank things. Thank you, Pam. And You're the best. She's such a sweet lady and and she always tells us that we have to tell people that it's mutiny radio.fm if you wanna <laughs> if you wanna check us out and if you are checking us out probably right now your life Ooh, you're probably are already doing it right where are they okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're watching us <laughs> yeah and uh, i guess um thanks to alta california as well for providing us with uh a show they have their own show right they do and um, they uh, support us they pay us money this is a tranquility tincture and this is all uh pain relief headache muscle if you have any of those pms everybody's raising their hand uh not an addictive uh this is organic plant-based medicine it's easier on body this is of course we're talking about the ganja <laughs> and go to dolores if you want some ganja pops. yeah if you for a dollar <laughs> they, apparently they're selling that. ganja pops we got to do that next time so tomorrow is 420 um so the city will be up in smoke uh, <laughs> so if you can't beat them join them join them Mm-hmm. Thank you, AltaCast. Thank you, AltaCast. Mm-hmm. And thank you, Eza K, for joining us. And I'm dying to know what it was like to record in Martin Gore's house. Uh huh. <laughs> Nobody gets to do that. Yeah, that was a special <laughs> one. I um, connected with Paul Freegard for my second album. And Paul Freegard, uh, he produced. I don't know if I can't, I don't think it was Violator. I can't remember which one. He produced one of the Depeche Mode uh, records and was really close friends with Martin Gore and was living in Martin Gore's house in London. So when I flew over there to record with him, I stayed in Martin's house in Martin's room. And got to check out all the books on his bookshelf and (laughs) took out a book and I took it down to Paul and I said, this is such a cool book. He's like, oh, that's the book Martin reads when he's here. And he had this whole routine when he recorded. He had a pool in his house and he had a sauna. So he would just work like four hours in the morning and then take a pool and sauna break and then work four hours in the evening. And, And that's how he would record there. And I really felt very inspired and, um... It was it was a special moment. The album that I recorded there was called I Want to Die Loving You. Mm-hmm. And it does have a very uh, Depeche Mode sound to it, of course, because mm-hmm. I, I had access to those keyboards and samples <laughs> through the producer. <laughs> so, yeah, that would be my second album. That's also on my website. You can check that out. com. E-S-Z-A-K-A-Y-E. And, um, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that definitely has a Depeche Mode sound to it. If you like that type of sound, oh, yeah. you'd really dig it. And I wrote those favorite. tunes right after I came back from Burning Man. 
So oh, wow. they're really trippy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the best kinds of songs. <laughs> <laughs> well, We've never been to Burning Man. It's one of those things we haven't experienced. You just can broadcast from there. Yes, yes. Yeah. That would be interesting. Yes. Mutiny <laughs> takes to the desert. It's natural. <laughs> I think it would be like us times 10, you know, Ooh. like the craziness. <laughs> Over the top. Yeah. What was it like um, going there? Have you been there recently or do you go there often or every year? I get playa lung. The dust goes into my lungs and I get this Ow. awful cough that takes months to go away. So what I do is I go to the decom parties when everyone comes back and hang out with as many burners as I can all year long. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of those. Connections. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hang out with them here in the clear air. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I always hear people talking about the, 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 the after parties or whatever. Like whenever we go to a DNA, uh, not DNA, cat club. club. Yeah, we, I always hear people talking about like, uh, yeah, burn, after Burning Man, like we have to do go to this person's house and just kind of like chill. I was like, you know, I'm you saying, should be good for Cat Club. Oh, they do perform. Cat they Club. do performances. Have there. you been there? I haven't been there yet. <gasps> You'd like it. Who wants to go to Cat Club? <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> you should check it out before. Uh, before just you. To, yeah, before yeah. you go, just okay. to check it out. Maybe or... check it out on one of their their dancey nights. Thursdays. Yeah. Usually Saturdays. Saturdays has a lot of people. Last week it was Fridays. Ladies of the 80s. Ladies of the 80s. Oh. Saturdays, Saturdays are good. Okay. Yeah. New Wave City or Club Gossip or I think 1984 is on Thursdays. But you can double check on their website. It's a video, video 80s, right? I I think think so. They do different things. Like and uh, Bondage a Go Go. <laughs> That's always fun. <laughs> the gimp's always there oh, <laughs> I'm going to come hang out with the radio goddesses They're having fun We're oh, having man. the time of our lives Hell yeah Did you want to play another song yeah. for us? I guess I'll leave you with um, This song called If I Can't Have You <laughs> And um, This is also uh, This will also be In a documentary um, oh. it was actually written for the documentary. Mm -hmm. Um, again, Barbara Schroeder asked me to write a piece. The story was Jean Harlow's story. Oh, wow. That's and, a good story. Uh, you know that one? Yeah. And, and, uh, and yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it the thirties or the forties? I think it was the, f the forties. You, right? you know what? I can't say with certainty. I, I know it was. Somewhere it was it was period. early Hollywood because yes. that's what her book was about MGM, and, and all yeah the all the early early blonde. Hollywood mysteries she was like one platinum of the first blonde. platinum blonde yes. before Marilyn Monroe before and her. Uh, her husband's first wife was crazy and she got out of the um, mental institution and came back and found him and he had married Jean Harlow and very recently. And she, uh, the first wife, they don't know, they think she shot him and killed him. And then she came back up here, I think, to San Francisco, jumped off a boat and killed herself. Yeah. And so the song that I wrote for that, I tapped into really those chemistry that you have with people, those, those connections that... You know, you, you just are never, no matter how you try, you'll never be separated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I tapped into when I told her story. Yeah. Okay, so this is called If I Can't Have You. And this was the first song that uh, we did with Bunny. <laughs> Enjoy 
was a good song remind us the name of that track that's called if i can't have you in parentheses no one will and you speak the truth (laughs) (laughs) sometimes you just take someone's heart and they can't have it back Mm -hmm. very true not giving it back (laughs) see super relatable Nisha. Yes. <laughs> That's why we like and support Eza K, and you have to support her too. Thank you. <laughs> this is very good support here. Y'all should get some. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have us. a Facebook as well? Yeah. I'm on Facebook. It's uh, Facebook backslash Eza K. Okay. E S Z A K A Y E. And uh, you can find my site from there as well, which is EsaK.com. Right. And we will have the podcast um, hopefully ready in, if, in the next couple of days. And yes. then maybe we can link it. Yeah, that would be um, good. Yeah. And then everybody will find out this lovely interview we're doing right now. <laughs> yes. And hopefully next time I run into this group called Subpack. And they are making sound packs where you can feel your music. So literally you sit in it or wear it and you feel the vibrations. That's actually how I learned how to sing. I -hmm. spent a year with the Tomatis method, hearing vibrations through my skull. And um, they're going to make me one in uh, boosting some of my frequencies and my hearing loss. So in the next performance, it's highly likely not only will I be using that vocal effects processor, which Mm -hmm. I sing through live, but I'll probably be wearing a, um, You'll be yeah. feeling the music, feeling, literally wearing the music. <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be an right. interesting. Th- I I'm I'm not sure where I'm going with this girl. Yeah. I like that. It's, is it kind of like Joy Division? Like you know how they did uh, Unknown Pleasures? Is that like the the sound wave? I think so. Yeah, you know their their first album. Oh, oh yeah. But we're going somewhere cool, and I'm going to be wearing those things as I'm writing this next album. So oh, wow. we're going to see it live. We're going to hear it. And we're going to feel it. We're going to feel it. <laughs> All the yes. five senses. Immerse ourselves in <laughs> it. My friend was Ooh. listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was lovely to have you here, and I really like your purse, too. Oh, it is thank purse. you. It is. Awesome awesome look purse. at this. Look at that. It's like a whole outfit. Mm-hmm. All you need. Oh it's like a part of you. <laughs> There's even a lock. Look at that. That yeah. is smart for the city. Yeah. <laughs> Cyber. <laughs> she is on it. Cyber. We'll definitely um, we'll like your page on Facebook and keep us posted Thank if you have you. any shows. We'll do. We we'll promote. Check it out. Yeah. Thank you. I love spending time with you tonight. Oh. I really enjoyed our conversation. I did too. Thank you for the opportunity. I hope Thank we, you. I hope we weren't too crazy. Yeah. Some people think we're <laughs> absolutely off our rocker when we ask good questions. Yeah. Well, they just want to answer. Awesome yeah. questions. <laughs> and you're a good storyteller, by the way. So I think the live performance would just make it augment it to even, you know, better proportions. We shall augment. <laughs> <laughs> Should we connect your iPod? <laughs> All righty then. Well, stay tuned for more.